Hello students, in class 12th today I am taking the uh, new chapter and the last chapter of this uh, 12th class that is the electromagnetic waves. electromagnetic waves this is very important chapter and uh, one or two questions are asked every year from this chapter so you uh, learn it very carefully <coughs> if you see the name electromagnetic it means that these waves have two kinds of fields one is the electric field generally called the electric vector and the magnetic field generally called the magnetic vector. Such kind of waves are produced whenever a charged particle is accelerated or when the charged particle oscillates. Then it emits its energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. So what happens that uh, these vectors oscillate mutually perpendicular to each other because until there is the oscillation between something no wave will be created in the medium so the electric vector and magnetic vector both oscillate mutually perpendicular to each other and a wave is generated which is which moves perpendicular to both the electric vector and the magnetic vector so suppose that electric vector is in y direction and magnetic vector is in z direction then the wave will propagate in the x direction <coughs> when electric vector and magnetic vector of the waves mutually perpendicular A wave is generated which moves perpendicular to both. electric and magnetic vectors vectors this way is called electromagnetic since it is being generated by both the vectors electric vector and magnetic vector so the name is given to electromagnetic wave <coughs> since this wave is perpendicular to both the oscillating 
relative vectors. So this is the transverse in nature. It is a transverse wave. So now I take the example of this one. This is suppose y axis, this is x axis and this is z axis. Here we have the electric vector E. Here we have magnetic vector B. The electric vector that the wave is like this. Here the vibrations are along the y axis like this. These are the E vectors and not J perpendicular the parallel to z we are having this wave this is so what we have these are the vibrations you should see that these vibrations are parallel to z axis similarly here like this. So this is E and this is B. Now this is the wave in this x direction. This is the wave. Wave is moving along the x axis. So what we have dielectric vector this E is equal to E0 Y so this is along Y axis so what we have this we write down more better is E X T because they is moving in the X direction E0 by E sin Kx minus omega t E0 by this is the amplitude here we drop this symbol uh, the vector similarly the magnetic vector this is your b x t b x t because b is moving in the x direction at any instant t this is equal to b 0 z sin k x minus omega t. These are the equations of this magnetic vector and the electric vector. So these are the amplitudes where E0 by E0 by this is the amplitude of electric vector 
एंड बी जीरो जेड दिस इज एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ मैग्नेटिक वेक्टर मैग्नेटिक वेक्टर के प्रोपोगेशन कॉन्स्टेंट के इक्वल टू टू बाई अपॉन लैमडा द प्रोपोगेशन कॉन्स्टेंट प्रोपेगेशन कॉन्स्टेंट और बी वेक्टर बी वेक्टर so this is what the electric vector and the magnetic vector and this is the wave that move in the x axis along x axis so these two components e and v are mutually perpendicular but this wave is perpendicular to both the electric vector and the magnetic vector this is why that this wave is transverse wave so electromagnetic waves are always the transverse wave they are never longitudinal base electromagnetic <clears throat> waves are never so now i will take the properties of this electromagnetic waves properties of electromagnetic these waves moves in vacuum with the speed of light so this is equal to c equal to 1 upon square root of mu not epsilon mu not the magnetic permeability epsilon not the absolute permittivity of the free space so if you keep the value of mu not and epsilon not you will find that this c will have the value of the speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second Absolute 
absolute permittivity of free space. Space. So now if we have some medium in medium this V is equal to 1 upon the square root of mu epsilon where mu mu E equal to mu naught, mu r, and epsilon equal to epsilon naught, epsilon naught. So this is what that we can have from here. So if we find that if we take C upon B, the refractive index. refractive index n equal to c upon b so we can have the formula this n equal to e square root of mu r into epsilon this gives you the formula for refractive index. Mu r the relative magnetic permeability and epsilon r the relative uh, absolute uh, permittivity, relative permittivity of the medium. <coughs> Generally, mu r is equal to 1, therefore n equal to square root of epsilon r. So this is what the refractive index of the medium. And now number 3. These waves can be reflected Reflected Diffracted etc. like like this like this and now four the ratio of electric vector to magnetic vector the vector is the speed of the wave so this uh, C equal to E upon D. This is one more relation. So many times the question is asked that in the space the electric vector is so much, magnetic vector is so much, find the speed of the electromagnetic wave. Then this is given by this formula. Now fifth. The total energy of the wave is 
equally divided. divided between electric and magnetic fields the total energy e is equal to epsilon naught E square. E is the electric vector, or E is the uh, where E electric field vector. Now you can see that the energy of electric vector electric field uh, now this is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon no e square what we have said that is equally divided it means that 50 percent of this energy is in electric field and 50 percent of this is in the magnetic field so the energy So if we add these two, then definitely we must have this energy. So we can give a proof. Total energy E equal to UE plus UB. UB, this is your half epsilon naught E square plus half mu naught b square so this is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught e square plus 1 by 2 mu naught into b that we know that is from here b is equal to e upon c so this is e upon c whole square using this relation now this is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught e square plus 1 by 2 mu naught e square upon c square. Now the value of c that we know it very well. This is mu naught so much This is so much. Here is this is one upon mu naught. Mu naught. So now we add to this. This is uh, e is equal to one by two epsilon naught e square plus 1 by 2 into 1 upon mu naught e square. Now in place of c, this is not c square. So this is equal to 1 upon mu naught epsilon naught. So this mu naught will cancel from here. Epsilon naught will go there. 1 by 2 epsilon naught e square plus 1 by 2 epsilon naught 
n to e square. So just you add this is epsilon to e square. This is now total energy. Now total energy that so we take it. Because E and E both are terms are coming here, so I take it to by this E T total energy. E T. So this is E T. E T. This is so much. So this gives you that the energy of the wave is equally divided in the electric field and the magnetic field. And now six. The pointing vector. The rate of flow of energy through the unit area held perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. So this is given by this equation. This P equal to E cross H. E cross H. But we have this B equal to mu naught H. So in place of h, we can write down to this one. Then this becomes your e cross b upon mu naught. This is the another formula. So this is the rate of flow of energy. So its uh, unit is the impedance impedance of the medium and this z equal to e upon h like this and this is approximately 125 ohm This is equal to 377 ohm. If you put the value of pi, then you will get so much. So when the waves are moving in the free space, this does not mean that they do not face the resistance, but they have resistance which is of this order. You can see this is a very high resistance. 
so in space uh, in the space there is also the impedance that is faced by these electromagnetic waves so these are some important properties of the electromagnetic waves uh, sometimes uh, these waves uh, they have told you they reflected and refracted diffracted polarized and they can have so many properties and uh, these waves actually uh, were discovered by the james uh, maxwell so tomorrow i will take uh, you first the displacement current this is necessary in many board exams this is asked there what is the displacement current so you all like share and subscribe this video thank you very much